and Trail Sansom Road widening project for the great city of Fort Worth. At this time, I would like to share with you what this project entails and how beneficial these improvements are for the traveling public. The agenda for this meeting will be as follows. It will be an introduction of the project team, the project manager's role, the project map and overview, the scope, schedule and budget, contact information, information about my Fort Worth app, and then questions at the end. The city's project team is comprised of myself, Alex Ayala. I am a senior project manager for the transportation and public works department capital delivery arterials team. Raul Lopez is the arterials team program manager. The city has procured the services of Burgess and Eiffel, who will serve as the engineering consultant for this project. Billy Wenlin and Jimmy Mullins are the project managers for this project. My role as the transportation project manager is to be the professional responsible for resource coordination, procuring and managing contracts and services for the delivery of a project whose limits and scope are predefined by the transportation planners. Burgess and Eiffel are the city's consultant project managers responsible for the design and coordination of the resources needed for the survey, right away acquisition, utility relocations, permit submittals, bidding and construction management, and ensuring that the elements of the predefined scope are included in the final design. This project is located in North Fort Worth within the Northeast quadrant of Loop 820 and Interstate Highway 35W. The Western limits of the project are at the Mark IV Parkway roundabout. Continuing needs approximately 2,500 linear feet and connecting to the future Interstate Highway 35W southbound frontage road. TxDOT is currently working on extending the frontage road that terminates south of Western Center Boulevard to the future expansion of the Mark IV Parkway and Loop 820 intersection. The project's sc scope will include widening the existing two lane road between Mark IV Parkway and the future TxDOT Interstate Highway 35 frontage road to a four lane divided roadway. Connect Cantrell Sanson Road to the future southbound frontage road and construct medians and shared use paths on both sides of the roadway. Currently, Cantrell Sampson is a two lane roadway with side road ditches east of the Mark IV roundabout. The road currently dead ends east of Old Denton Road at the TxDOT right of way. The proposed improvements include widening Cantrell Sampson Road from a two lane roadway to a four lane divided neighborhood collector beginning at the Mark IV roundabout. There will be a medium break at Flippin' Way, which will allow egress and ingress to the crossing at Fossil Creek Residence and to the warehouse on the south at 5600 Cantrell Sansom Road. At the intersection with Old Denton Road, a dedicated left turn lane will be constructed for northbound travelers. The warehouse at 3098 Cantrell Sansom Road currently has a driveway at the eastern side of the building. A left turn only medium break will be constructed at this driveway. A full median opening cannot be placed at this location due to the proximity of the connection to the intersection with the future Interstate Highway 35W frontage road. The 
pavement widening will consist of two 11 foot lanes direction and a medium about 17 feet wide. 10 foot wide shared use paths will be constructed on both sides of the roadway. The project is approximately a half a mile in length. The tentative construction start date for this project is in the spring of 2023. The project budget is $4.9 million with the construction cost estimate for the roadway approximately $2.7 million. TxDOT anticipates completing the frontage road in the summer of 2021. At this time, I would like to share with you the city's My Fort Worth app, which is the official app for residents and visitors to quickly and easily report issues to the city of Fort Worth. Residents are able to take a picture of any issues they encounter on Fort Worth right away and send it directly to the city. The app is capable of sending precise coordinates, which will allow city staff to locate the issue and allocate the necessary resources to resolve the issue. The app is available through the App Store and Google Play. If you have any questions or comments about this project, please submit them via this WebEx portal. This slide has my contact information, as well as the information for the city's traffic division in the event you have any traffic concerns. I would like to thank you for your time and for your participation as we navigate online public meetings during this unprecedented time. Stay safe. So this is Raul Lopez. Good afternoon, everyone. I am the program manager of the materials group. And there is a couple of questions already in the chat. First question is, how close will the road be to the resident fences? Alex, do we have that distance? Or Billy? Billy, are you on, on, on the presentation? So Billy is our consultant engineer with uh, Burgess and Apple. I'm, I'm thinking it's a, it's about a good 22 to 25 feet from the back of the curb. Do we have the section, Alex? You scroll to the section. There we go. So it's according to this is about 29 feet. Is this section accurate? Bill? So according to the section, it's about 29 feet from back curve to proper line, which is where the fences are going to be. Or should be, I should say. Second question is, will there be any notes? Noise reduction for residents, landscaping, color fences, sound reducing windows. I don't believe we will have uh, noise reduction uh, treatment. Typically, on arterial projects, noise reduction is not provided. That's uh, more so for the freeway type uh, thoroughfares. Arterial pro arterial uh, thoroughfares did, did not uh, render the amount of noise that's. Uh, um, that requires uh, sound mitigation. So, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no sound, mit sound mitigation on this on this project. No, you are no sound mitigation. Okay. The next question is, why widen the road when traffic is minimal right now? So the goal, yes, the traffic might be small right now, minimal right now, because it's a dead end, number one. This will provide connectivity from the future frontage road that Texas is uh, going to construct. 
uh, and it provides connectivity to Mark IV and others. So it'll, it'll provide relief to Western Center and access to Mark IV from A20. So it, it's an alternate route that's being provided um, once that service road is constructed. Next question is, we live directly across from the driveway. We need noise reduction, the trucks rattle, the stuff hanging on the wall. Yeah, typically we, we don't provide noise reduction. That's noise reduction requires very tall walls uh, or fences and they, they can't just be fences. They can't be the, the standard picket fences and it be solid walls. And that's not included in the budget of these types of projects. Typically the city of Fort Worth or most municipalities do not provide sound barriers. Again, those are typically uh, more um, more so for freeways where, where traffic is driving, I mean, driving by at higher speeds and no stop conditions. Next question is, will this cause any closure in the roads for the time being? Will there be detours or will, be, will we be able to transit the area as normal? Billy or Alex, do we have a traffic control identified at this time? At this time, we, we do not have a traffic control uh, phasing uh, because we're barely in the uh, conceptual uh, phase of design. But as those uh, plans evolve during time, if we do have to have a detour, uh, we will definitely notify the, the the community, the HOA that lives right there adjacent to the to the roadway. And there will be other communities. And this is uh, James Vaughn's uh, with Bird tonight. Well, I just want to add that we will be making every effort to uh, make sure that they have access to the warehouses at all times, so they don't have to shut down. And while we're doing that, we'll also make sure they have access to Flipping Way. Okay, and there will be other community meetings as we progress the, the design and, and before we start construction. So those things will be uh, communicated to the community um, via community meeting. Will will the new road be at the same elevation as Flipping Way? Are we doing any fill? Most likely. Most likely the road will actually be at a lower elevation in order to get the drainage to work. Uh, that is something we haven't finalized yet. But, um, we will be working up flipping away um, a certain distance and get it to connect to the existing elevation. Okay. What is the start date? Is the spring of 2023? We say spring. It could be anywhere from March to May, Juneish of 2023. At this time, it's too early to identify an exact month and a date. But again, as we progress the the uh, design and uh, production of the con construction documents, we will have other community meetings and we'll let you know with more precision when that date is. Are there any future plans to fix the road in the opposite direction going towards Blue Mound Road? Not quite sure. Is that? Yeah, I'm not. At this point, I'm not aware that we have any plans to improve in this area other than this segment that we have identified right now. Widening this road will increase traffic. We will need noise reduction. You should spend the night in our house. This is terrible. We understand, yeah, um, when you're used to having a, basically a dead end street, you don't, you have to hardly have any traffic, but unfortunately we need to provide relief for other, uh, other, um, arterials in the area. And like I said, typically noise reduction is not provided in any other the arterials. Um, you, 
there's a roundabout at the uh, west end of Mark 4, and that basically slow, uh, tends to slow down traffic as you approach the roundabout. Um, and so, the, yeah, th there won't be any uh, noise reduction. We don't provide noise reduction on city, on city arterials. That's correct. We we will we will design a traffic control plan that will uh, attempt to, to prevent traffic uh, truck traffic from driving through the subdivision. We don't want that. I agree with that. Will there be landscape added on the sides to the home? Is there any landscape on this project, Alex? Billy? No, there is not. Just basically thought, yeah, our typical typical uh, soil stabilization or ground stabilization is basically putting sod or seed and, and revegetating the, the uh, disturbed areas with uh, grass. Why is there going to be a 10 foot wide sidewalk? This is consistent with other sidewalks. So the 10 foot sidewalk. It's not a, we don't call it a sidewalk anymore. It's a 10 foot share path shared by pedestrians and bicycles. Uh, the complete streets uh, policy that the city has developed within the last few years requires that we provide other modes, all the most transportation, the same opportunity to use um, uh, the road or, or the right of way. So we are providing um, widening uh, the traffic lanes for vehicles, but we're also providing wider sidewalks or share paths so that we can accommodate pedestrians and bicycles and keep the bicycles off the uh, vehicular uh, uh, pavement. Will the utilities be relocated on the ground? Alex, I don't think we will. Will they? If, if you're talking about the power lines, those will remain aerial. Correct. So I, that's the last question that I'm showing. If anyone has any other questions, please post it to the chat room. So this, with this improvement, some people are, uh, Thinking that they, they will this will be the value of their properties. With these improvements, actually, you will improve access to your homes to the freeway. And that will relieve um, other, other thoroughfares, conditioning other, other, other thoroughfares. Will there be access to 35 from this area? Alex, I believe they can they can cross from Flipping Way, make a left, and, and access uh, the free, the frontage road. That, that's correct. Currently, um, for those that have seen that dead end of the frontage road, just uh, south of Western Center, by by the new hotels, Textot is currently connecting that that frontage road what it's going to do it's going to go parallel to the to interstate highway 35 and parallel to loop 820 and make a full circle and tie into the future expansion of mark 4 parkway so you will be able to a you know take get on 35 the way you usually do now going down south uh, off mark 4 parkway or you'll be you'll be able to loop around now, and um, off of this new frontage road. What are the accommodations being made for the oil and gas road? We're just going to put a a drive uh, drive approach onto that. Um, 
just like any other driveway on the on the corridor. So they'll be able to make a right turn and get onto the freeway. Um, westbound, they will have to go to the roundabout and make a U-turn to be able to access that driveway. Correct? Yes, in order to enter. Depending on the vehicle size. Yes. Smaller vehicles will be able to turn up sleeping ways. Am I correct? The, no, the oil and gas road is actually just um, immediately, it's the next driveway after the sleeping way to the east. The, the driveway right across flipping way actually goes into the DHL supply chain warehouse. Right. Uh, and that goes into the oil. Into the oil um, gas and oil wells is the 1 directly east of it. What will the hours, what will the hours of construction be the warehouses are allowed to work in the middle of the night. We're so, anticipating the construction will be during the day. Yeah. City standard um, hours, uh, a lot of work hours, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. No holidays. Work is not allowed on holidays. On city holidays, I should say. But how long is the project estimated to take? A few months or a few years. What's the construction duration? Bailey, our Alex. preliminary estimate is probably going to be about a half of a year, maybe a little less. About six months. Is all Denton going to be widened as well? Not at this time. The intersection at Old Denton is going to be the fully developed intersection, but it's then going to taper down to its existing size. There are no plans that we're aware of to widen it, but if they are, they'll be able to connect to the intersection that we're building with this project. The scope Just the north scope of this project. I'm sorry. Uh, just north, uh, just north of this project, Old Denton is a five-lane road, and then it squeezes down to two lanes. Um, we're making the intersection somewhere between the two. If they, if Old Denton is later expanded, so there's no short period where it's only two lanes, it'll be able to connect the intersection we're building. If they leave it as it is, uh, it'll function just fine. I think you're trying to tend to answer the question that as to what fully developed means. Uh, really? Yes, uh, yeah. about the old intersection. So it's, it's uh, fully widened, basically. That's what fully developed means. Will there be a roundabout of old Denton? No, not at this time. It'll be a uh, traditional intersection. Many southbound people on I-35 will be cutting through on Cantrell Sounds, and especially westbound A-20 traffic. The sound barrier is definitely appropriate. Exceptions should be made. Yeah, if, if, if you're on a freeway and you're headed, you're going to continue going on A-20, there shouldn't be a reason why you would be cutting through unless there is construction on A-20 or what. Uh, or any obstruction or what have you. And that, that will happen in the main thoroughfare. And that's that's part of the uh, the purpose of thoroughfares when the freeways are, are uh, uh, jammed up or there is an accident. Yeah, the thoroughfares provide uh, relief for the freeways. That's that's part of the network, unfortunately. And uh, there shouldn't be a reason why these people will be cutting, going, trying to go through a roundabout to get to H20 West. 
if they're going to a destination west of the sunset, absolutely, yes, they will be cutting through there. That's, that's the purpose of the arterial, to provide access to those areas uh, without having to go through the freeway. And, and also keep in mind that TxDOT is currently working on expanding that frontage road. So if people get off on Western Center uh, just to bypass whatever may be going on at the at the Mixmaster, they will probably go straight on the frontage road because that's the path of least resistance to get to to Mark Four. So you know, keep that in mind as well. That part of these. Part of the improvement for Textod is expanding and connecting that frontage road. So who can contact? Do you have Kendall Sanson Road fixed in front of the elementary school? I I need to look in to see exactly where the Blue Mound and Fort Worth City Limit line at, is located. Uh, I'm not sure if west of the widened section of Cantrell Sampson is actually city of Fort Worth. But I can definitely get back with you uh, with that with the person to contact. Can you further explain the ingress and egress of the warehouse? Alex, can you elaborate that on that? Which is the warehouse on the west or the warehouse on the east? Uh, the question doesn't specify, so why don't we just address both? So at the warehouse, um, for the warehouse at 5600 Mark 4 Parkway, you will have an entrance here. Um, can you guys see my cursor? Yes. yes. Okay, there will be an entrance here uh, at this um, at this medium break. At the warehouse on the Alex, oh sorry. Can you go back? Right there? So yeah, westbound traffic will West uh, take the left turn lane. That there's a left turn lane uh, designated by that faint purple line. Uh, just immediately adjacent to it. And so they'll going westbound traffic will use that left turn lane and then enter uh, the driveway for the for the uh, warehouse. And then going uh, eastbound, they'll use the driveway and then make a right to go to the freeway. And if they're going westbound, going out of the warehouse, they will turn left. And go westbound. So, so you do have a full access median opening at this driveway. At the warehouse on the east side of the project, you will have uh, an entrance here, but but you will not have a the the median. We cannot put a median break because here to allow people people that are going westbound to enter um, this driveway unless you 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 turn here. So let's say for example the trucks that are maybe coming off of Western Center, they will have to come down this road, go straight and you turn at the roundabout at Mark Fork Parkway, which is about eleven hundred feet from from this driveway. Now, the, the folks that are coming out of your facility here, they'll be able to make a, a, a left out of, out of this driveway to go westbound. Um, and as well as any trucks coming out of this driveway, they'll be able to make a right turn here and go, go back and catch Interstate Highway, the, the frontage road for IH35W. And, um, and then um, you also have access here on on the driveway to the to the west of the building. And if you have further questions about um, circulation on your building or want to discuss this further, 
uh, please uh, take note of my phone number and my email, and I will could definitely set up a time to talk to you or any other issues that or specific questions you may have. So there's a comment that the diagram appears to show a median. Yeah, there there is. I'm not sure what that intends to convey, but there is a median. So the median is a solid part of sort of the lighter gray shown by the light gray. And there's a median opening at Old Denton, but that will only be able to uh, that is to allow traffic coming up of Old Denton to go um, uh, eastbound. That's the purpose of that meeting opening. Exit won't be from the highway. It will be from the frontage road. That's correct. The entrance to Cantor Sansom off of Interstate 35 will be off the frontage road, not from the not directly from the freeway lanes. There won't be a, an off ramp from the freeway to get the candle sounds of So anyone coming or trying to access candle sounds of will have to exit Western Center and then continue south down on the front road and then access candle sounds of That is correct. And, and I, East Truck Entrance. I'm not sure what that intends to uh, address. East truck entrance. I'm not sure if he's talking about this. So this this sentence basically would be limited for um, eastbound traffic only, and then west, and of course our outbound and westbound traffic. So anyone exiting out of that driver would have to go, I mean, we'll be able to go westbound. Correct, right, right here. Yeah. But that driver won't have access off of the front of the road. From Natrix Way going it's Fort Worth. I think that's clarifying where the city limit is from Apex Way on Cantor Sons. Not sure where Apex Way is, but. Uh, Should have been a medium for the trucks from the east side. Yeah, there cannot be a medium there. That is too close to the frontage road, and that's not. Um, uh, they cannot maneuver. That's too close to the frontage road. The trucks would not be able to maneuver safely and stay out of the way for the um, out of the uh, out of the way for the oncoming traffic coming up in the frontage road. It, it is a challenge to. You have a meeting opening for every single driveway on on uh, whether it's streets or private driveways for uh, private private property. Um, unfortunately, one a meeting opening cannot be provided for for all of the driveways or all of the cross streets because of the space and limitations, especially in an area where where um, you have an industrial usage, high truck traffic. Are these plans finalized or still a work in progress? Uh, this is what we call a 60%, right, Alex? It's it's in between a 30 and a 60. Okay. So they're not final. There's there's more um, there are more details to be added. Uh, but the general the general configuration is is uh, 
what's going to be developed given the spatial constraints and the uh, traffic on the road, the anticipated traffic on the road. As of now, that's the last question. Uh, there was a person that had a question about where to contact about widening a different section of capital sandstone. So that's where the uh, app that Alex was fishing, right? One, can you bring it up one slide up, um, Alex, to the app? Oh, okay. Yeah. My, the My iForworth app? Yeah, iForworth app. That is where that app is very convenient. This app is not just for um, to let the city know where you might think uh, road widenings or road, road improvements are, are uh, needed. This is for any kind of concerns, whether it's garbage pickup, you know, uh, code compliance or non-compliance, um, any kind of concerns or any kind of uh, issues that you might think the city might be interested in knowing you can use that app to detect pictures, upload them, and, and, and that will go. The, the information will be routed to the, to the specific department that needs to address it, uh, depending on the, on the name of the information that's provided. So um, I think we have a few more questions. What do we need to do to get City Hall to create a budget to raise a wall between Old and Turn Mark IV? I, I I wish I could tell you we 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 can, but ordinarily, I mean, we have tons of lane miles of arterials, and we do not provide um, noise walls. I know it, it is it is hard to get used to added noise because the road was closed all the time. Uh, because it's a dead end, basically, and you have very little traffic. But unfortunately, that's that's what the arterial is is um, meant to do: is to to grow as traffic grows, to provide mobility for all this traffic that's uh, that's trying to move from point A to point B. Um, noise noise walls again are typically provided on freeways because traffic is moving at 55, 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, and trucks and all the vehicles. Are moving nonstop as far as freeways, and so in this kinds of conditions, uh, this is probably a 40, 40 to forty-five design speed, and um, it is likely that the the uh, actual speed is going to be thirty-five at the most because because of the uh, proximity of the roundabout and the uh, the intersection with flipping ways. So um, it, it won't be any different than any other arterial in Fort Worth if there's no no noise walls. Is DHL the consultant in planning process? Where is DHL? Is that at the um, at the corner? They have both warehouses. Both warehouses on the south side yes. of the of the right of way are DHL, and we have not we have not uh, consulted with DHL uh, on them. We were, but we definitely can can talk to them if if they have any questions. They can definitely. Uh, call me and we can set up a meeting. Yeah, we probably need to, uh, maybe we need to reach out to them, Alex, and make, to make sure that they are aware of what the improvements are going to be like and how it's going to impact them. Any chance of getting the child to relocate their entrance to the front road side? I, I do know the frontage road side has a very large elevation difference between the DHL. Pro or it's not even a DHL property. They're renting it from someone else. But there's a very large elevation difference and there's going to be a lot of storm drain improvements putting, being put in with the tech stop plans. I don't think it's feasible for them to have access on that side. The Western DHL property does have access on Mark 4. I don't know if it's used as much as the Cantrell Samson Road, though.
So that's the last question. Again. Alex, contact information is on the slide. So feel free to contact her by phone or by email, and she'll be glad to uh, answer any other questions you may have. There are no more questions. I appreciate your time to to get on this presentation. And once again, I want to thank you all for um, being resilient and, and helping us through this and navigate these online WebEx meetings. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns, please, by all means, uh, please give me a call. Alex, one more question. And in any chance of creating a road for Mark IV past the first building to the 3000 building? Like a, like a shared use path of some type? I, I'm, I'm past not... the first building to the 3000. The 3000 is the second building, I guess. Is there any chance of creating a road? That, that would be a, yeah, that would be a private road. That would have to be funded by, uh, by the owners of the buildings and, and and have a common access between the two sites right I understand, Mr. Just we, we appreciate thinking outside the box. Yeah. So if there's no no further questions, um, we're gonna end this presentation and um, and once again feel free to contact me. My number is 817-392. 8883. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. We appreciate everybody's attendance and we appreciate uh, the patience. I know this is a little, little awkward. It's kind of interaction where you cannot speak. You, you have to type your questions, but uh, we're all getting used to it. We're trying to get used to it. So we all appreciate your patience and, uh, and your attendance and your, your comments. And again, there will be another one of these uh, when we reach the uh, probably the 90% uh, milestone of the project. And you will be notified just like you did for this one. Thank you very much. And have a good evening.